In health, uh, in sex, in everyday affairs, the dirty little secret, the sense that no one talks about is smell. Its primordial effect on emotion, on mood, on behavior, and on human interaction is barely understood by the general public. Our next speaker, Dr. Alan Hirsch, is a rare expert on smell and taste and how these can impact on weight loss, on sleep, on perception, on learning, among others. He may also soon be one of the world's richest men because he's invented something called Sprinkle Thin, taste and crystals, which you just pour on your food and poof, whatever it is you're eating, you eat less of it and you lose weight. Dr. Hirsch, uh, in his own life, admits to occasional cravings for forbidden fruit, wait for this, such as brownies and snack crackers. As you can see, he is a wild and crazy guy. Moses, <laughs> thank you. Smell is impacting upon us all the time, whether we recognize it or not. There's an entire invisible universe at the tip of our nose, and it's impacting upon everything we do. How do we know that? Well, we, one of the ways we know is that smells can impact upon contingent negative variation, can affect not only brainwave frequency, but how our brains respond. And uh, a whole host of different studies have been done looking at effects of odors on, on behavior. This just shows some of the connections between the olfactory system and the limbic lobe, or the emotional brain. So the quickest way to change somebody's state or mood is with smell. So what we did is we did a study looking at effects of, of ambient odors on, on products, something we could measure. So we looked at the effects of odors on, on people's perception of Nike shoes. And we had people go into two identical rooms. And one room was a mixed floral smell, and the other room was filtered air. And what we found is in presence of the mixed floral smell, that 84% of the subjects said they liked the shoes more. Not only would they like the shoes more, they said they would spend more money, an average of $10.33 more per pair of shoes. It suggested that uh, odors could impact upon people's perception of buying behavior. Well, we presented our data in not only on how odors could affect shopping behavior, and people would buy more in a jewelry store in the presence of different aromas and, and, and different uh, uh, malls. As a matter of fact, 60% of the time when you walk in a mall, you turn right, we were able to demonstrate that by putting a pleasant odor on the left and a negative one on the right, we were able to reverse those numbers. And, uh, I, I presented our data at, at, at a conference in, at, at, at Bally's in Vegas, and somebody from the audience got up and said, well, Hirsch, with your studies, you're not causing people to buy more. What you're causing is you're causing salesmen to be friendlier, and they're selling better. And that was a really hard argument to answer. And I, I walked out of that meeting. I walked by these rows and rows of slot machines. I said, how can we get rid of the salesmen? How can we get rid of the salesmen? I said, of course. Here's a way we can get rid of the salesmen. And so what we did is we looked at uh, using odors and, uh, and gambling behavior. And we went to the Las Vegas Hilton Casino. Anybody been to Las Vegas Hilton ca Casino? Raise your hand. Okay, a few, a few gamblers here. Well, what we did is we looked at three different areas. In one area, we had our, our active odorant, and in another area, we had a control where no odor was present. In the third area, we had uh, an inactive odorant. And we looked at the amount of money people put in slot machines the weekend before the study, the weekend of the study, and the weekend after. The weekend before, the weekend after, there was uh, 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 no significant change, about 2% change. In the weekend of the study, in the inactive odor area, there was a 3% change. In the control area, there was a, a, about 2% change. In the active odor area, there was a 45% increase in the amount of money people put in slot machines. And when we used a higher level odor, there was a 53% increase. Even though this, this was a 45% increase in the amount of money people put in slot machines, the K Hilton would not allow us to, to state the, a the absolute numbers. They, we weren't allowed to do that, but I can tell you based on public data I heard before I testified before the uh, Nevada State Gaming Commission. Um, for instance, at the, uh, uh, at the Mirage, their nightly take uh, prior to orderization was $2 million on slots alone. So you, so you can see, imagine what a 45% increase would do for that. Well, needless to say, our studies have been pretty well funded after that. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, as Lucy says to Snoopy, the problem now is that we know nothing, everything about everything except what's going on. And, uh, and I think that's true. I mean, the question is, why do odors have such a strong impact upon people's behavior? Um, and I don't know. Part of the reason might be because the part of the brain that we think smells or the olfactory lobe is part of the limbic system or the emotional brain. So the quickest way to change somebody's mood state or behavior is with smell, quicker than with any other sensory modality. 
you smell a smell, and you immediately decide, I like it or I don't like it. And, you know, we've, <laughs> we've, and, you know usually we think about, about bad smells. We actually did a, a little study for the Attorney General's office in the state of Illinois where we looked at a mulching site south of Chicago, and the days that with a bad smell wafting acro across the streets of the school, there was an increase in behavioral problems in school kids. And there's a lot of evidence that in bad smells tend to increase aggression. In, uh, in one, uh, one study where college males were told to turn the knob right and a colleague gets an electric shock in the presence of bad smell, they turn the knob much further to the right. Or in days when there's more bad smell and air pollution, there's an increased number of motor vehicle accidents, suggesting drivers are driving more aggressively. We began to explore odors and tastes as a way of helping facilitate weight loss. It, it says, for dessert, I'd like to smell some chocolate cake. <laughs> and the, the reason we did this is because we take care of patients who have lost their sense of smell and taste, often from head trauma, from auto, auto accidents. And what we found is after people lost their sense of smell, they initially would gain 10 or 20 pounds. So I figured, gee, if when they lose their sense of smell, they gain weight, maybe if we gave people extra smell, they would lose weight. And it made some anatomic sense because there's a direct connection between the olfactory bulb and the s ventral medial nucleus of the hypothalamus, the satiety center. That's the area of Detroit and guinea pig. The guinea pig eats and eats and eats until it dies. So I anatomically it made sense. And if you think about it, why is it you stop eating when you're full? You know, you, you don't stop eating because your stomach is full. That only happens when you're overeating. Part of it has to do with satiety that you just feel full after you've eaten. And, and it's part of it is the, the way it smells and the way it tastes. We did a study of 3,193 people over six months. We had them inhale different odors, and we, like, and we found an average weight loss of 2.1% body mass per month, or approximately 30 pounds in the course of the study. So it suggests that smells might help people lose weight. Uh, and then we have also gone on to taste, and as Moses mentioned, and we did finish a study we presented uh, last year of 108 people over six months lost an average of 33.6 pounds. Uh, for weight loss. However, we do not encourage anybody who's less than 20 pounds overweight to use because it, it tends to induce excess weight loss otherwise. We know one of the things is that diets don't tend to work, but one of the other things we've looked at is when we're called by oncology pay, uh, frequently because people have to, uh, they lose weight and they're trying to get them to cause them to gain weight and they say, well, what can we do to help them gain weight? And what we do is we give them diet cola and I'll tell you why. Diet cola tastes sweet. It tastes sweet, it's great. So it tastes sweet and it, it, so the brain says, sugar coming in, tastes sweet because it's diet, and the brain goes to cephalopancreatic reflex, pancreas release insulin, pancreas releases insulin, in response to releasing insulin, when blood sugar drops, in response to dropping blood sugar, you eat more. So wh the way we get rats fat is we add artificial sweetener to the rat chow, and the way we cause uh, oncology patients to gain weight is we add diet soda to their meals. So anybody who's drinking diet soda along with their meals realize that this is a way that we use as a model for getting people to gain weight. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about something that I talked about uh, earlier this week on Good Morning America, and th that has to do with our, our studies uh, on looking at effects of odors on perception. So we found an aroma that impacts upon people's perception of age. It, is a fact that it makes men perceive, when women wear this aroma, men perceive them to be six years younger. <laughs> uh, anybody want to make a guess on what odor it is? Wait, pink grapefruit. And here we, we license out the patent. So this is for you, although you don't need it at all, but it, it, it's a, an equivalent of a, a factory Botox. <laughs>